Last week, Apple updated its Pro line of iPads, and so now we definitely know the difference between a Pro iPad and an iPad, iPad type iPad. Here's what it is. A iPad Pro has a bigger screen, a better screen, a faster processor, four speakers, support for an Apple Pencil, and support for a smart keyboard. Okay, so what does all that mean? Well, it means that this right here is an all new shape. It is a 10.5 inch iPad, and it's so good and so powerful. It really just feels like Apple's showing off now. Okay, so 10.5 inches is an all new size for an iPad. And you can see here what Apple has done is they've increased the size of the entire iPad just a little bit, but they've also reduced the size of the bezels. They're still pretty big on the top and the bottom, but they're way smaller on the sides. So why bother making a new size? Well, Apple says in part, it's so that you can have a full size keyboard. Now, I don't know what Apple's definition of full size is, but it's not the same as mine. This is not a full size keyboard but it is just a little bit bigger and it makes a big difference when you're trying to touch type on it. That also applies to the smart keyboard that Apple offers. Here it is, and it is what we expect from a smart keyboard, what we've seen before. It connects with a little connector on the bottom and it doesn't have shortcut keys. So a lot of people prefer the Logitech keyboards which have shortcut keys and they're also backlit. But I really do like this keyboard. It's a little bit awkward on your lap, but it folds up to a really small size. So the thing is really compact and portable. Anyway, back to the screen. The screen on any iPad is the most important element and the screen on this 10.5 inch iPad is so good, it's basically unfair. Apple's like that football team in the fourth quarter that's leading by 20 something points and they're just running up the score because they can. What do you need to know about the screen? Well, it's 22, 24 by 16, 68, whatever. It's the same pixel density that we expect from high end iPads and everything looks great on it. It has all the iPad Pro screen stuff. It has a true tone display, so it can ambiently detect the color temperature of the room and change the color of the screen to match it. It gets super bright, up to 600 nits. It's oleophobic, so you have fewer fingerprints on it. It's less reflective. It has a full P3 color gamut. It's fully laminated, so the pixels feel like they're right there on the glass. All that stuff is pretty standard. But what's new on this iPad is that there's a higher refresh rate. Apple calls it ProMotion, and what it means is the screen can refresh at 120 hertz, or up to 120 hertz. Who, who cares, why does that matter? Well, it matters because when you're doing stuff on the screen, like scrolling, the pixels stick with your finger a little bit faster. There's a tiny, tiny little bit less lag there. And when you're drawing with an Apple Pencil, there's also less latency. Apple says it's down to 20 milliseconds, which by the way, speaking of running up the score is literally one millisecond less than what Microsoft just claimed on its latest product. Okay, here are the rest of the specs just to get them out of the way. On the back is a 12 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization. It's the same camera as on an iPhone 7. I think it's super overkill for an iPad, but whatever, taking pictures with an iPad is a thing. It's okay, I don't judge. It's also really useful for document scanning if you wanna do that. On the front is a seven megapixel camera. You've also of course got Touch ID, which on this one is the latest generation, so it's super fast. There are four speakers. You can get it with LTE, which this one has. Uh, it also inside has an A10X Fusion chip. It's an Apple custom made chip for iPads and what matters is that it's just ridiculously fast. You're not gonna have any problems with performance on this thing. The other thing you won't have any problems with on this thing is battery life. Apple claims it gets you can get about 10 hours on it. And actually I'm getting really close to that. I'm getting close to nine, a little over nine hours a couple of times this past week. So that's good. Apple never lies about battery life and that applies here. This thing should last you all day, no problem. So I haven't talked a ton about software yet, and that's because the software that's running on this iPad Pro is the same iOS 10 that you already know. You hit the home button to go home to a big screen of apps, you slide over to get a split view if you wanna have two windows at once. Basically the same stuff that you expect from an iPad and have seen in an iPad for a couple of years now. But what's coming later this year is iOS 11, and it is going to radically change your ability to use the iPad as your main computer. The kind of stuff you're gonna see is you're gonna swipe up to get a dock, just like a Mac, where you can have a ton of apps on it. You can also do split screen and you can even bring up a third screen. You can do drag and drop, and it's crazy multi-touch drag and drop, so you can take multiple objects and drag them together and slide them over to another app. 
And most exciting to me, because I'm a nerd, is you're gonna have a real file system. So you can get access to your files without going through crazy hoops that you used to have to go through. Whether your files are on Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive or iCloud, they're just going to be there ready to access for any app iOS 11 is gonna completely change the dynamic about whether or not this thing can become your main computer. But you can get this right now and not wait for iOS 11. It's running iOS 10, and so should you. Well, let's run through it. To start, this is expensive. The iPad Pro 10.5 starts at $650, and if you're gonna spend 650 bucks on a thing, you should probably think about making it your primary device. And if you're gonna try and make this thing your primary device, you probably wanna step up to the $750 edition, which has 256 gigs of storage, which is enough storage for your main computer. Now, the question, the perennial question for iPads is, can you make it your main computer? Well, maybe. If you know a lot about iOS, you know exactly what you need out of a computer, you know how to get everything out of it, you could probably pull it off. For me, I can't quite do that. There are a few things that I just can't get out of an iPad right now. But I think that might change with iOS 11. So if you're not in a hurry, I would wait. Wait for iOS 11, see what it does to iPads, see if you can turn this thing into your main computer. Until then, basically, if you need an iPad and you must have the best thing, the iPad Pro 10.5 inch is definitely the best thing.